Elephants are fighting. It is always the grass that suffers the trampled. Um, this is how the old saying goes. Now, before we get domestic, just to comment on world affair. I'm getting worried. I'm getting worried. You know, the current ongoing political situation in Ukraine does not seem to come down. On a daily basis, bombardment still continues. And the supply of military weapons uh, from uh, from NATO to Ukraine is still ongoing. Now Ukraine is armed with uh, long-range, you know, artillery pieces, the howitzer, and now they have even, you know, the multiple, uh, you know, uh, rocket launches system with the capability to fire over 50 miles and all that, a sign that peace is elusive in that part of the world. And what does that mean? It means for us who are hoping that peace would come, probably peace looks like a mirage. The closer we get, the further it gets away. Um, like I always say, whatever happens around the world, you know, the economies are interconnected and the ones that get, you know, hit hard are those in the developing countries, such as Namibia. Not only is the price of commodities going up, just everything else is going up. Life is becoming harder. Ordinary people find it hard to buy basic commodity, I mean, basic stuff, food stuff. So that's why I always say, when war continue going on, it's those in developing countries that experience, you know, the pain. Sometimes I pray for world peace. Sometimes I pray uh, for, you know, peace to come back quickly so that the world can get back to its former glory. That way, we somehow maybe bring a bit of stability um, and just get people, you know, back to their normal lives. But if the situation continues, at, the, at its current pace, I don't know how countries are going to recover economically. Um, this is in the face of the pandemic. So, uh, so we now know, um, you know, this party going to happen uh, on the twenty fifth of uh, the, on the twenty fifth or before the twenty fifth of June. Uh, I guess that's a very interesting news, very interesting development from African Africa's world. You know, we are all looking forward to that. 
Uh, we just want to find out what exactly is happening. You know, I think uh, the ongoing, you know, economic situation in the world, particularly in developing countries such as Namibia, you know, experiencing a lot of economic headwinds, you know, prices of commodities going up. And um, uh, as a result, then you also have, you know, uh, uh, Namibia's wrapper rate going up. As a result, you know, borrowing uh, is becoming hotter and the prices of food commodities, uh, I mean, food is going up. So as a result, a lot, of, a lot of people are really experiencing, you know, difficulties surviving in this economic situation, in these economic, you know, times. So, you know, uh, that's what I always say. When it comes to issues of, you know, world political, I mean, political issues around the world, you know, the hardest hit are those vulnerable countries such as developing countries, uh, in whether in Africa and in Asia and in other parts of the world, you know, particularly countries that, you know, when it comes to food production, they, they are net importers. So Namibia is a net importer. So it means we, we import more than more than we consume. So as a result, now you have the Namibian dollar pegged to, to the South African rand, and whatever economic situation South Africa experiences, so it affects Namibia. So as a result, once you know you know the rand is affected, it also affects Namibia. Namibia's uh, Namibia dollar because it's pegged to the rand. So as a result, you know it it, it becomes really you know, vulnerable, you know, currency. I'm Gerson Sindano and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. Apart from the usual issues that I talk about, you know, the, the prices of commodities such as fuel uh, in Namibia are highly influenced by the geopolitical situation, you know, in Ukraine and the ongoing, you know, economic volatility, uh, you name them. This economy is experiencing a lot of headwinds. And, okay, apart from that, today is not to whine about the economic situation and all that. But just to show you where I live. Uh, so I get to be asked questions uh, where I live. I live in Namibia in a small town called Rundu. And uh, that's what I'm going to do today, just to show you uh, you know the beautiful town of Rundu, and you know just to show what exactly happened in this in, in this part of uh, the country. And as usual, you know I find it hard to always just film in town and just remain in town. So what I'm gonna do is show you, you know, this part of the country, um, the beautiful town of Rundu, and also drive out and show you, you know, what people do, especially the winter season. Now it's a winter in Namibia, it's extremely cold, uh, but with that comes, you know, harvesting period. You know, there's a bumper harvest this year. Uh, the fact that it rained, you know, a lot. So people are gonna get a lot of, you know, millet, uh, or mahangu if you like, pure old millet. Then when we get mahangu, traditionally what happened is uh, you you'd cut a stick, and then pound this mahangu with it and extract mahangu from the cob. But now, in this case, what happened is there are new technologies. Uh, we got machines that extract mahangu from from the from the millet cob, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today, just to show you that. Uh, first, here is my small town of Rundu.
Yeah, so you can see the beds here, and you have millet. Let me show you how this millet work. So you have a millet pop. Ah, you got it. Uh, this is millet. So what happened is you put it in the machine over there, and then you remove this grain. You remove this grain, so you can see grain coming out. That's the grain that you need to remove. Uh, this is mahangu, mahangu, um, you know, millet if you like. So that's the machine that separates, you know, that, that extracts mahangu or millet from the pork here. So that's the situation right there. And this is the operator. So we got an operator here. So what happened literally is, we put in a machine there and Yes, the residue. So the, out, the outcome after you know my uncle has been extracted from the cob. So this is what you get. You have a heap of residue. Let me just show you. So that's the residue right there. Uh, now this is how it operates. So you can see literally stuff getting out here. Yeah. Um, I have been placed on top, and then look at that. I'm getting spotted. The grain getting spotted, and then you have the residue. The unwanted stuff, uh, there's a heap over there, so the unwanted stuff. Literally, that's what's happening here. So, here's the operator, and that's what the guy is doing, placing my hunger in there. And here's the residue right here. Very interesting stuff. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. 